back lot or no the back part of the school it goes a rail with a stair then a little space rail with a stair it's probably one of the most famous things in any you, you could look at probably any skate video ever okay, so and that. find that it's nuts are we talking about roller skating no we're not <laughs> The rain. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> what if I just kill myself right oh, now? Stop the yeah. podcast. Stop the podcast. No, no, it's keep the like, podcast going. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this anyway. would be the most amazing podcast of all oh, time. Oh my god! And straight then she murder. killed herself. Straight murder. She um, murdered herself. But yeah, so you went to the school. I did. Mm-hmm. In what years? Mm. Well. What year did you graduate? I didn't graduate. Uh, what year did you go? <laughs> I was expelled. Well, there you go. <laughs> what are you going to talk about later? <laughs> when we, uh, all right. Well, uh, fuck, I don't even know any of this. Right, so, so uh, <laughs> basically. So you went to this school and it was kind of dope for skating. <laughs> Tell us how you're. <laughs> That's a non I got, I got this. I got this. All right. He got so this. Not, uh, 90210 oh, is a very famous zip code, right? Everyone knows 90210. Yes. They know about it because of uh, the show Beverly Hills High School, with, you know, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so, the most famous zip code in the world. What I wanted to know, the reason why I wanted to bring it up is what was the difference in that show and your real life experience at the high school? Okay. First, I just want to make it clear that I did not grow up in Beverly Hills. I like there's part of me that's just ashamed of of being from Beverly Hills because there's like there's a lot that goes with it like oh, oh Beverly Hills. Mm, that's so you're so so, uh, nice. so mean. Whatever. I grew up in West Los Angeles, 90064 and I moved to Beverly Hills when I was 15, when I was in high school, um, for the high school, because my parents wanted me to go to a good high school. So, it was not glamorous. It was a bunch of rich kids um, who didn't have anything to do, because there's nothing fun to do in Beverly Hills. No. So, it's just kids with a bunch of money who, who were just kind of assholes, who did a lot of drugs, who were entitled, and you know what's interesting? I never met a bigger group of thieves. For as much really? as yeah, for as much as uh, you, you got a little battery, Patrick. That's all good. We're almost good. For uh, as well to do as a lot of these kids were, mm-hmm. um, you couldn't leave your purse alone in a room. Really? And I think it's because they're bored. I think it's because they're bored. Yeah, I think it's because if you get everything that you want all the time, you don't ever have to work for it. Like, what's the next level? You get yeah. it's like. Oh, you know, my parents didn't buy me a car until I was 18, but these kids were getting, like, Escalades and shit on their 16th birthday. And so if you get a, an Escalade on your 16th birthday, what else is there to look forward to? Nothing. you got to get excitement somehow. So, like, co- oh, there was a lot of cocaine. And there were lots of drugs being done. Did any of your classmates have a sweet 16 on MTV? Oh, please. Please. <laughs> please, please, please tell me there no, was. No, I wish. Fuck! I really wish. God I damn it. Sorry. You know there was one in Memphis? There was. There yeah, was. there was. Mm-hmm. I think for my 30th birthday, I want to have. A uh, sweet 16. I want to have a quinceanera, or I guess a trentiniera. Yeah. Slash Ooh. bat mitzvah. Slash. You never had a bat mitzvah? Slash I, bachelor party. Slash bachelorette party. I. No, bachelor did, party. I didn't. Because I'm a man? No. Oh, why? Because we'll <laughs> have everything there. Okay. Bachelor you can have parties it. are not limited to anything. A, bachelor, a wet hot bachelorette? Uh-huh. Um, in in England, they call it a stag do. I like, I like a stag. I should call it a stag. stag a stag do. do. No, but it's a stag do because you do stag it. Do? And for for a woman's, it's called a hen do. Oh, hen do. I don't. <laughs> no, it's not Hindu. Oh, hen do. It's, 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 it's not called a hen do. <laughs> what's that? What's that elephant god? That Hindu god? Gana- Hindu. Ganache. No, yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. It's Ganesh, you guys. I was making a joke. She's fucking. Um, <laughs> two beers in. Uh, uh, so what were, what were we talking about? That's <laughs> not your Facebook group for that should just be like yeah. slash this, slash yeah. this. Oh, my quinceanera. Oh, oh, I was bat mitzvah. I was not bat mitzvah when I was three. I'm Jewish. I'm Jewish. This one. I'm Jewish in ethnicity only. The Jewishness is an ethnicity. It's also a religion. My parents are both atheists. We never practiced Judaism. Um, we had a, a Christmas tree and we called it a Hanukkah bush. I went to I went to <laughs> what? It, it, it had tinsel and snow globes on it and popcorn and like all that and we called it a Hanukkah bush. Hanukkah and bush. I went to Jewish day school and, and Judaism is actually pretty fucking cool, you guys. I just have to say. It's still I have but, some Jewish um, cousins. Do I? I said I have some Jewish cousins. There you 
I like so, that. From yeah. New York. New so, York. So it's good, yeah. but we were never ever religious. We never went to temple or anything. But, um, and so when I was 13, I did not have a bat mitzvah because I was Wiccan that year. Uh, that year? <laughs> that year I was Wiccan. Hey man, there's some people. <laughs> hey, <laughs> cheers on that. Hey, what is this? Someone commented. Oh, uh, Who knows? What are you? What am I? What are we all? You know what I mean? I like, know. What is anything? Oh, as you guys always know, I mean, we're like? live, <laughs> live on Periscope all the time, Quick Sixer. Uh, <laughs> Brynn looks like she's about to be on number three. I'm on beer number three. There you of go. six. Just kidding. Um, so, so I didn't have a bat mitzvah, which is a, kind of a bummer, because all you have to do is learn some Hebrew, and then your parents are this fat fucking party, and there's usually like a dance floor and a DJ, and you play games, and... And there's like, you know, sometimes they make like t-shirts for you that are tie-dyed. I know this is the 90s when, when we were talking oh, about it. Oh, I was like, what? Um, <laughs> I and, was like, oh, well, dudes. And food and yeah. stuff. And people give you like checks and presents. So I didn't have that. But my sister and I went to Birthright two years ago. Around this time, actually, birthright? two years ago. Yeah. If you're Jewish and you're between the ages of 18 and 27, you get to go to Israel for free. Um, really? For a week, yeah, mm -hmm. ten days That's actually. Bullshit! I want to be. Can I? Can I be converted and go? You could have, but you're too old now. God damn it! So. Um, not your birth rate. Oh. Um, no, there are people. I'm sure there are people who have picked it. But my sister and I went, and then they said, "Hey, does anyone want to get bar bat mitzvah?" And we're like, "Yeah, we do." So we just kind of learned a, a, a Jewish portion of I don't know. I don't know. We recited some shit, but we were bat mitzvah. That's, that's kind of dope. In Jerusalem, nice. Ooh. it was dope. The homeland. In the homeland, and um, you know, in Jewish religion, you're not technically a man or a woman until you've been bar mitzvah. So, so, my, so two woman. years ago, almost to the day, I became. Oh, a she's woman. a lady. You're technically. I'm a, woman. a lady. Yeah. You are so technically a woman. Ladies. You're not thinking right now. <laughs> All the ladies. Um, All the ladies. <laughs> so before you were a woman, you were a child actress. Yeah. She was so a child yes. until two years ago. She was a child. You were a child. According two to years Juice. Ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> According to Juice. Yeah. The so Juice. Technically not in the not a two one zero because you would hate to say that you were from Beverly Hills. So. Um, <laughs> yes. You started. Who got you into acting? Your dad, your mom. Child acting. Yeah. Oh, they had nothing to do that. I wanted to act. They, yeah. It's not that that they were like stage moms and dads trying That's to push me into it. The worst. No, yeah, no, no. It, it was nothing like that. I um, I did plays all the time whenever it was school was out, summer break or or school plays. Um, I did school plays and then I went to like camps, like theater camps. Oh, that's cool. And I loved doing that ever since I was a kid when I was really young and and I just loved it. I loved performing. Um, it was just my, I would make. My sister and I would choreograph dances and we'd like do it in front of my full length mirror when I was when I was a kid. It was just it was fun. Yeah. And I getting it. I loved it. And I always Back wanted to be Backstreet Boys. No, we were more in sync girls to be honest. Hey, What's up, Justin? Bye, bye, bye. Bye. So um, I always wanted to act. I loved acting. And um, so I I kind of begged my parents. I was like, let me let me be an actor. This is what I want to do. I I was probably like nine or ten years old and I was like I was like, I want to do this. I know that this is what I want to do for life. Mm. Let me do mm. this. And so I was taking classes. I was always taking classes, not because they pushed me, because I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And um, so I took uh, some classes at this place called John Robert Powers. I think it's probably one of those places where like, they just kind of take your money and they don't really help you. This is what it seems like, but I took a lot of classes there and I enjoyed myself. And I went to a, a acting and modeling competition in New York. With my mom and dad, and I really loved that trip. It was nice, it was just me bonding with my parents, and especially because I was kind of a problem child. I remember this being like a really nice time mm -hmm. in my life. You're the only child? Uh, no, I have an older brother and a younger sister, but I was the middle child, and I acted like it. Yeah, and, nice. um, and so we went, and then I got an agent through that, and for a year, I acted professionally. So when I was 11, I acted professionally, and I booked three national commercials, and um, I did a staged reading for <laughs> for a a script that became a movie. It was called Mean Creek. By the time they produced it, I was too old to play the character that I played in the stage reading. But and then we did I did a stage reading for um, Dennis the Menace the musical. Oh, I, oh yeah, shit. I was Margaret because you know I was like this little girl with these big glasses. And then and I was in three national commercials and I loved it so much. And um, it's. It's funny because I would go on auditions all the time, and you know, you go on a ton of auditions, and rarely do you book something for, I don't know what the ratio is, but it's a lot to a little, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, my mom would ask me, she's like, how do you 
you know, I'm 11 years old. She goes, how do you deal with the rejection? And I said, just so simply, I was like, well, you know, I just wasn't right for the role. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll be right for the next one. So you understood at the time. Yeah, yeah and it's right. and it's funny because that's before you get into being a teenager and you're so self-conscious and, and all this stuff. And, and I was a kid and I didn't really take it personally. And a, an adult couldn't really understand how you don't take it personally. And it was just so simple. Like, no, I'm just not right for that role. But that's, that's fine. Good. Next one. Something else will come. You know, yeah. Like you, you'll just exactly. Think like, something, mm-hmm. that, something else you'll be right that, for or whatever. Just that probably clarity. helped out your directing now. Like, just knowing that at a young age, well, like you're yeah, probably like, oh, well, somebody comes in to audition for whatever you're doing or whatever. If it's not like a friend that you like, that their acting style or whatever, mm-hmm. you'd probably be like, no, you're not. It's hard because I'm a very good. empathic person. I mean, you know, I <laughs> we were on set the other day and it was a night shoot and we're trying to like wrap up and it's four o'clock in the morning and the, 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 the the floors are very thin and the people below us are probably sleeping in and someone drops a light and I look to him and I'm like, dude, come on, please. And he was like really upset by me calling him out on that. Oh, and that just like lived with me for two days, you know? Yeah, that's happened to me too. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I wasn't being a dick to him. I was just like, please be careful. But then, you know, when I saw him back two days later after our break, I was like, hey. Hey, how are you doing? Good? Okay, cool. Are we okay? Yeah, it's, it's I'm a, I'm a very, and I think, are we still friends? You should like me. And it's not, and it really isn't necessarily about him liking me. I just want him to feel good. You know what I mean? I want people on yeah. the set to feel good. I want them to work hard. Don't get me wrong. It's not like just slack off and just have fun all but, day, but. Yeah, but that, like that mentality when everybody's happy with each other, that makes for a better set. That makes for a better, uh, you know, work relationship. I think so. Stuff. So like, it's, it's good to have people Liking each other, one, that's, that's also... But there has to be so many charge or else you're not going to get anything. Exactly. Yeah. Totally. And I so, mean, yeah, we, we had people we had people charge. I was in charge in a certain way, and then Bailey, our producer, was in charge in a different way. And, and but I always yeah. would, would talk to my crew like, like they're people and regard them as humans. And we could joke around, but yeah. then if we're short on time, we need to get something done. It's like, okay, what yeah. are you doing your job? Come on. No, definitely. And I've heard a lot of horror stories about directors who work at my company just you know treating PAs like shit and yelling at them and so there's worse. and there's no reason to do that there are times on set where I get frustrated mm-hmm. and I get upset if someone's not doing the job and we're behind because of it and and I've I've raised my voice but it goes something like this I'm like I'm really sorry I know I'm in a bad mood right now I'm sorry but someone's not doing their fucking job can somebody please do the job I'm really sorry for how I'm acting right now I don't want to behave like this I don't want to behave like this okay <laughs> that's good. Quite I mean, hey, I, I at least that. you're acknowledging <laughs> that you're acting that way, and that way they can say, okay, well, she knows what she's doing, whatever. Da, da, da. Exactly. Well, that's the thing. Um, like, it, I mean, there's there's tons of times where that's happened to me. Like, people have been like, ah, oh, well, this your so and so PA isn't doing this. I was like, well, when do you fucking deal with that? Yeah. You don't fucking you don't deal with that. That's my job. Don't do it at all. And I mean, it's cool. Like, I mean, your your set was pretty chill compared to a yeah. lot of shit I've been on, where people just like I've seen PAs cry, Ooh. I've seen PAs file sexual uh, what's it called? Uh, sexual harassment. harassment charges on people. Like, mm-hmm. it's like my set isn't a good is, set unless someone cries and files sexual or harassment dies. or and dies. Oh, and it dies and oh, it breaks. Something. Oh, this, is, this is the this is and the then they're drunk. <laughs> All of my PAs, I want all my PAs to, um, to cry, Mm -hmm. then file a sexual harassment suit, get fired, do heroin, and then die. And And, then that's that's a successful set. And then they sue the company. Oh, no, no, because they're dead. Post-mortem. They can't. No, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. That's not. Their family does it. No. Um, To backtrack backtrack a little bit, I do, I do have a question about shot acting that I wanted to get to. Yes. (laughs) Um, okay, so uh, uh, apart from child acting, there's not really jobs for children, except for like a lemonade, a, a lemonade stand or maybe mowing your grandmother's grass. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about like how, like working, that mentality of working when you were younger, like did you see this work, did you did you feel like, oh, oh shit, I'm it making money, strange. like, Actually. yeah. I didn't necessarily see it as work because I, I liked it and I wanted to do it. And in terms of the money thing, I mean, my family was comfortable, you know what I mean? I'd say we were like upper middle class, and so I wasn't left wanting. If I wanted something, you know, my parents, where maybe they uh, they had a deficit in like 
emotional support, they would buy me shit. You yeah. know what I mean? So that was never really a problem. The money my my dad put away for me in, a, in an account, and I used it to buy my first car, actually. I think in total I made about $14,000 from those three those three commercials in the 90s. And yes. that was it. And I mean, that's not talking about all the money that they spent on me to go to these competitions and to buy sure. my headshots and stuff, but... Um, yeah. I never saw I never saw his work. I I liked it. It it gave me it gave me purpose. I felt like this is what I wanted to do, and I was doing what I wanted to so do. This was like your form of like going out and like playing with your friends. It was like this is what you wanted to do. This yeah. was your form of playing. This is what I so, wanted to do. So, so now looking back on it and knowing that it's a job, knowing that you were doing something to make money or whatever, how do you feel about it now? Like, would, do you think that it helps you in in your work mentality now? Um, because you're still doing what you love to do. You're still making films. You're still, true. you know. I think it helps me in that um, I got to be on set at an early age, and I liked and I liked being on set. Being on set was cool. Being on set is a very unique beast. And and anyone who hasn't been on set, and if you're curious, you should be a PA, do something, get on set. It's it's unlike any other job, and I and I love that, and I love the energy, and it's just, you know, it's a bunch of people and professionals, and you're working, but you're creating art or you're making something you're making a video you're making whatever and so that's that's really cool in terms of like child labor or whatever it's different for me because I was not forced into acting by my parents I wasn't doing yeah. it to feed the family so if that were the case it might be different but it, it wasn't ever that for me it was just I am interested in commercials and movies and all these things and making videos and when I was a kid I was making videos all the time you know yeah. at, at home and so just to see people doing this as their career I thought it was pretty fucking cool yeah yeah, let's go. Dope. Um, dope. 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 It's, it's dope. Let's talk about Utah. Okay. Okay, so um, I think before anyway. you get into Utah, oh, hold on. Okay. Biggest turn off. Yeah, yeah. Just, just it, real quick, we talked about this the other night when we were talking about <laughs> doing this. Biggest so, turn offs, one, two, three, just go, just go. Biggest turn off right now. Go. Biggest turn off, uh, okay, bad breath. Um, <laughs> Uh, <coughs> pretending like you know more than you actually do. Bro, you uh, only get one. Here, here, go. Bad breath is pretty bad, but I have so many.